Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what we're going to do is check out Ubuntu Mate 2204, which is actually one of my favorite distributions, but unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to check it out. But now I've had a chance to check it out. And in this video, I'm going to give you guys a full review. What is Ubuntu Mate? Well, Ubuntu Mate is an alternative version of Ubuntu that features the Mate desktop environment instead of GNOME. In addition, it's also the absolute best choice when it comes to recapturing that classic Ubuntu look and feel because this distro comes closer than any other I've ever used. And best of all, it's lighter in resource usage than some of the bigger distributions out there. I've always loved Ubuntu Mate, and it's been one of my favorite Linux distributions for quite a while now. I just love the attention to detail, the polish, the theming, the classic style, how performant it is. There's definitely a lot to love about Ubuntu Mate. But unfortunately, while I was testing out this release, I ran into some bugs, and these bugs served to remind me why Ubuntu Mate has never made it to become my daily driver. So what I'm going to do in this video is give Ubuntu Mate 2204 a full review. I'll let you guys know what I liked about this release and also what didn't go quite according to plan. But before I get into that, I need to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, Linode. Linode is a Linux-focused cloud server provider and using their platform, you can spin up your very own Linux server in minutes. And if you are a fan of the Mate desktop, you can actually install that on a Linode instance and then set up your very own remote desktop in the cloud. And considering that Mate was actually engineered to work really well in remote desktop situations, that's actually a great fit. But even if you're not wanting to launch a cloud desktop, there's countless other things that you can build on Linode's platform. You can host your own website, manage your domains, spin up a Kubernetes cluster, utilize object storage, or whatever else you could think of. If you don't already have an account on Linode's platform, then what are you waiting for? The URL on the screen right now will give you $100 in free credit towards your new account, and by doing so, you're actually supporting this channel, which I would really appreciate. The Notes platform is super fast, complete with NVMe storage, and the billing is simple and straightforward. You're going to love it. I really appreciate Linode sponsoring this video as they've done for many others on this channel. They're an awesome platform, definitely check them out. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and check out Ubuntu Mate 2204. I'm going to give you a full review, like I mentioned, complete with what I liked about this release, what didn't work out so well. Let's go ahead and check out my experience with this distro. First, let's go over the installation process. And that process was super simple and straightforward. And that makes sense because most, if not all, of the alternative flavors of Ubuntu have an easy to use installer, and Ubuntu Mate is no exception here. The installation process itself is just a matter of booting from the installation media, testing out your hardware in live mode, and then proceeding with the installer. And during the process, there's only a handful of questions that the installer will ask. And then after that, the process is over pretty quickly, and before you know it, you're on your way to running Ubuntu Mate. So for the installation process, let's consider that a definite win for this distro. Now let's switch gears and talk about the look and feel of Ubuntu Mate 2204. And this might surprise you, but I feel like the development team for this distro takes theming more seriously than most. And yes, even more seriously than Pop! OS, which is saying a lot. If you skim through the release notes, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. A significant portion of the release notes are dedicated to theming adjustments alone. In this release, there's actually way too many theme refinements to where I couldn't possibly mention them all. Standouts include a full sync with Ubuntu's Yeru theme, some additional Ubuntu Mate specific theme changes added into the mix, and they've even redesigned the panel icons, and they look great. In fact, all of the theming looks great in this release, so when it comes to the theme, that's also a win for this distro, actually more like a victory. There's even AI designed wallpapers available too. I didn't even know that was a thing until literally just now. The look and feel of this distribution overall is just fantastic. The default layout is so close to the classic Ubuntu style that this distro may as well be a spiritual successor to it. And actually, that's exactly what Ubuntu Mate is. A spiritual successor to classic Ubuntu in every sense of the word. But if that wasn't enough, you can completely forego the default layout and choose from one of the many included alternative layouts. So even if you are not a fan of the default arrangement, this distro makes it very easy to change to a different style. 
But as you explore Ubuntu Mate further and peel away its many layers of customizations, you'll find all kinds of neat things that you can tweak, such as deciding which icons appear on the desktop, changing the default window manager, adding a pull-down terminal. There's many different tweaks here, and I think the only thing that even comes close is the Plasma desktop. So if you actually enjoy tweaking the look and feel of your desktop, then you're going to feel right at home with this distro. Now let's talk about software selection. Ubuntu Mate ships with the Mate desktop, which I guess you could probably assume from the name of the distro, but more specifically, it's Mate version 1.26. This is actually one major version behind Upstream though, and normally I would mention that as a downside, but Ubuntu Mate has a history of creating PPAs that enable users to install newer versions of the desktop, so it's very likely that they might consider doing that again. And perhaps a newer version would fix some of the issues that I ran into, which I'll be mentioning later. Anyway, the Mate desktop itself is very well integrated and very likable. It's a fast and efficient desktop and it feels very performant. The Kaja file manager is very effective, including all of the features that you'd expect in a file manager. The Mate control center makes it very easy to adjust all kinds of settings. And every time I use it, I'm reminded of how this type of thing looked and behaved in older distributions. It's actually my favorite style. And I prefer this layout while changing settings to the more modern GNOME style in the GNOME settings app. And like I mentioned earlier, there's no shortage of things you can tweak. When it comes to the web browser, Firefox is actually the default in this release, but default when it comes to the web browser doesn't really mean much in Ubuntu Mate because they literally give you a dedicated application that makes it really easy to switch to a different browser. As you can see here, the browser ballot box actually gives you the ability to install very easily any browser that you might want. All of the popular web browsers are present in this app. And considering that Firefox is a snap package in this release, which has generated quite a bit of backlash in the Linux community, I feel like this browser ballot app has never been more relevant than it is now. To be fair, Firefox as a snap does launch considerably faster than it did when I first reviewed Ubuntu 2204, but I'm still a little skeptical when it comes to snap packages as the technology in general isn't something that I would consider as being ready for prime time yet. So the fact that Ubuntu, or any of its derivatives for that matter, has defaulted to snap packages at all is a little bit premature in my opinion. But there's also a minimal mode in the installer as well, and that's great for those of you that would rather choose your own applications and have fewer things installed by default. More importantly, why doesn't every distro have a minimal mode? I think that's such a great concept. You could choose to have a full suite of applications or maybe something more stripped down. I think that's an awesome thing and hopefully other distributions will have a similar option as well. Also, I really need to mention the Software Boutique. The Software Boutique is actually a dedicated app that you can use to install other applications. Now you might consider this a complete software manager, but it's totally not that because you won't find all of the applications that the Linux community has to offer in this boutique. But what you'll find instead is a curated list of applications that are very common, things that a lot of people install, and it makes it very easy to install any of those applications. In fact, installing applications here is so easy that I think even Linus from Linus Tech Tips might actually be able to install a piece of software without hosing his entire system. So at this point, I've had a lot of great things to say about Ubuntu Mate, so you might be under the impression that I'm going to give it a glowing recommendation and let you guys know that you should all install this release. But actually, the bugs, quirks, and even crashes that I ran into while I was testing it makes me actually hesitate to recommend this to, well, anybody. And most of the issues that I ran into had to do with how Ubuntu Mate handles displays, which to be honest, it doesn't do very well. During my test, I plugged in an external 4K display, and what I wanted to do was disable the internal display and use only the external display. And this is something that in the past I had no problem doing in Ubuntu Mate, so I actually thought that this is something that would be very easy. It's also something that's easy on other distributions, so I really didn't expect to have a problem with something as simple as, well, attaching displays. When I first started Ubuntu Mate 2204 from Live Media in order to install it, the DPI was so small when the welcome screen appeared that it was very hard to read the screen. In fact, while testing, I was unfortunately experiencing a migraine, and trying to read the screen actually caused me additional eye strain, which is the last thing that I want to experience while my head hurts. It made it worse. 
The issue here is that this distribution has inconsistent support when it comes to high DPI displays. So I guess you could say that Ubuntu Mate isn't just giving us a classic style desktop. This distro actually contains old school problems as well. Problems that have been well figured out for quite a while now. After I chose to try the release before installing it, the resolution did actually fix itself. But my issues when it comes to display management didn't end there. It only got worse. Once the installation process finished, I booted into the fully installed version, and then I attempted to, again, use my external display. And when I plugged in that display, the wallpaper ended up getting tiled. But that isn't really a problem. I've actually seen that on many distributions, and it's very easy to fix. You simply just refresh the wallpaper, change the wallpaper to something else, and then back again. It's not a hard problem to solve. But actually, it was a bit challenging to solve. When I attempted to fix the wallpaper, any changes that I made only affected one quadrant of the screen, which is a brand new bug that I've never seen before. And when I tried setting a different wallpaper in order to attempt to reset it, or even just modify other options for how the wallpaper is centered or stretched, any further attempt to fix this just made it worse and worse. So when it comes to managing displays in Ubuntu Mate, it's finicky at best, and actually, in my case, very problematic. But I'm actually not done yet when it comes to talking about display issues. No, I'm actually only getting started. After I was finished tweaking wallpaper settings, I started to notice strange flickering and even screen artifacts on my display. It even got to the point where notifications seemed to become duplicated, and at one point it literally looked like there were two notification systems that were fighting for dominance on my screen. And that got so bad that the window manager actually crashed. So to try and fix this, I decided to set the resolution of my external display system-wide, which seemed like a good thing to try to do, but actually that seemed to break high DPI support on the login screen, returning it to the eye strain causing small text version that was actually working fine after the installation process was over. But even though those settings actually broke high DPI support on the login screen, it actually did fix the resolution of the display after I logged in, so I was actually glad to have that part fixed and working. So that was something. And at that point, I thought I was done when it comes to display issues. But no. When I went to disconnect my external display and just use my internal notebook display, well, that was a big mistake. When I disconnected the display, everything turned super huge and both panels crashed. At that point, the only way to get back to a working desktop was to reboot the system. But the average user wouldn't know how to actually reboot the system without the panels being present. So after that, I actually noticed another bug. And this bug in particular is with the welcome screen. One of the best things about the welcome screen is that it allows you to switch layouts right from that screen. So for me, I was very eager to preview the different styles that are bundled with this release. But I noticed that every time I changed the layout, another welcome screen appeared. And at one point, I kept changing the layout just to see how many welcome screens I could actually fill my display with. And the irony here is that the release notes actually claim that switching layouts is actually solid now but it's definitely anything but solid. Now, I think the worst part here is that this is an LTS release. This is a long-term supported release. And in such a release, problems like what I've experienced, there's just no excuse for that. There's no room for errors like that. Reason being, an LTS release is actually geared for, you know, companies to use on workstations. And if you're gonna run something on company workstations, it needs to be solid. Now, don't get me wrong, bug-free software is impossible. But something as simple as switching screens, that needs to work, especially considering that in a lot of corporate environments, I mean, you're dealing with people with docking stations. So there's going to be quite a bit of display switching in corporate environments. So LTS releases really need to get this figured out. Now, this isn't a problem in Ubuntu, but it is a problem in Ubuntu Mate, and there's just no reason for that. Now, I hate assumptions, but I have to make the assumption that perhaps the project was just hurting for volunteers and couldn't find enough people to help test this kind of thing. Now, if you disregard the problems that I ran into, what you're left with is a very fantastic distribution. The software boutique, browser ballot, the classic look and feel of the desktop, how fast it performs. There's a lot of good things to say about this release. But unfortunately, with the issues that I've experienced, I really can't recommend this to, well, anybody. To be fair though, the installer does feature live mode. And you could use live mode to demo this release before you install it, so I guess there's nothing to lose by checking it out. If you encounter issues like I did, you could just decide not to install it. 
But if you do decide to check it out, I recommend that you spend additional time testing this release just to make sure that there's no surprise bugs waiting for you because honestly, I've lost confidence in this release considering how glitchy and quirky something as simple as display management and changing layouts was for me in my tests. But I do want to underscore the fact though that if you take out of the equation the problems that I've experienced, Ubuntu Mate is a great release and the attention to detail, the polish, the theming, and the performance are all great things to have in a distribution. So it does have good qualities, but proceed with caution. So let me know what you guys thought about this release, this review, or Ubuntu Mate in general in the comments down below. I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say and hearing about your experiences. If you haven't already subscribed to Learn Linux TV, please do so. I have a bunch of videos coming out soon, some really good ones if I do say so myself. So definitely subscribe and click the like button if you like this video, and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.